In this example, we're going to look at how we go about using Wayfinder to build a navigation. Um, you can use Wayfinder to build multiple navigations on a page. Uh, in this example, you could you know, potentially build five different uh, instances of Wayfinder at the bottom to uh, generate the links for each one of these. Um, but in this tutorial, what we'll do is we'll look at a one-level navigation, and by one level, I mean there's no drop-downs. You can build drop-downs, stuff like that. It's super easy. But for the sake of this tutorial, the, the goal is to just give you a quick overview of how Wayfinder works and give, uh, kind of get you comfortable and get you started. And we'll look at a few examples of kind of pushing the template or the uh, templating functionality on it a little further. So to begin, go ahead and uh, let's look at this. We'll log in to um, our particular site. And uh, I'm going to look and show you the code for this template. This is for the home page. We've got a home page here. And we assign this particular area um, up here to be in the header. Uh, so we created a chunk named header. And uh, let me pull that up. And as you can see, we've got a chunk named header. And I, we created a, um, we, in these tutorials, you'll see that we're using the chunks and the templates. We store them on the server in files, so they're easier to work with in our uh, own text editor. Uh, obviously, you can store these in the database, but this is simply importing this into the database, which is covered in another tutorial. Okay, so the navigation is right here. So we've got a simple Wayfinder call, Wayfinder, and we say the start ID is equal to zero on the level one. And let me explain these two parameters. Uh, start ID, what you're doing is you're specifying web, in this case this little house with the web, that is the start ID of zero. So you're saying, oh, okay, I want to list all the children under here under zero, um, <clears throat> which the code is we're telling. You could have said easily, hey, I want to show all the children under solutions under four, and it would have listed these out. Why don't we just do that so you can kind of see what happens if we change this parameter. Let's change it to four. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to come over to site. I'm going to clear cache and that just basically re-updates that template. And let's come back over to the website. You're going to see that this navigation will have changed to those four children. And by four children, I mean the four children resources here. So let's go ahead and go back and let's change that back to zero. Now level equals one. If you don't specify the level, it will go down, I think as far as, I think 8 or 10, don't quote me on that, but it will go down pretty far down the tree structure. So if, for example, if, it, if we just left the default level 0, it would show these children too, but because we didn't set up the HTML to show these children, which you can easily do using however you want to format the, um, the structure, you can do that, uh, of your navigation. So I set it to level 1 and said, look, I just want the top level to be showing up. And so, we'll, again, we'll clear the cache, and we'll go back and look at this real quick. And let me update this. And there it is, back to the way it was before. So, let's uh, look at a little more advanced example. And by the way, if we look at the HTML structure here, it's just a simple list-based navigation. And uh, I'm just using, let's see, if we come over here, it's just UL with a list. Again, nothing really fancy with the A-link. Uh, inside of there. So what if our navigation was built just a tad bit differently? What if instead we had uh, something like this? It said UL and then we said, you know, okay, it's got a class of, you know, top nav and each one of these children, you know, we just leave it easy uh, like this, but but then what if we did have a drop down and the structure was like this so this gets a little more complicated we have the top level um, with the class of top nav of course the list navigation of the list item which is no big deal but then we want that drop down to have a class of drop down and we can just repeat this for another example, I'll show you here what I mean. What if, oops, put this in the wrong place. What if link two in the navigation we'll call that drop down one and two. Okay. Again, there's nothing really complicated about this, just a simple list-based navigation. Um, Oops, I'm 
sorry, probably should have done this in advance. Make it go a little faster. Okay. So we've got our navigation with two links, uh, top level and then drop downs under each. And obviously, you know, you can extend this if it had more drop down items. Okay. I think I've made the point, so I won't do any more. Okay. So this is a little more advanced example because we need to define the drop that that drop down and you know that class and the class on the outside one. So what you do in Mod X is you define this one as the outer TPL and this as the inner TPL. And let me explain. If you go to Google and you type in Mod X Revo Wayfinder, the first one that pops up is the documentation. And if you scroll down, you'll see under here under parameters, general parameters, you'll see some a lot of different options. And the one I just explained to you was outer TPL and inner TPL. And let's see, I'm sorry, I'm going a little fast here. Uh, template parameters, here we go. Here we go, we have inner TPL, row TPL, that's, uh, you can keep extending this and outer TPL. So you can define what the outer uh, UL is going to be, what the inner one's going to be, like we saw in the drop down, and even what you want in the list. If you know, if you want to build a really expand that out a lot more, you know, add all kind of classes and IDs and all sorts of stuff. And again, you can look through the documentation. But I just uh, want, and again, if you go down here, here's the parameters and explains each one a little more. But I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because, again, with Mod X, you can go into an infinite amount of detail to configure and change things as much as you want, which is great about Mod X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define two. I'm going to define an outer and an inner, and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. So to begin, I'll go to Elements, and I'm going to go to Chunks. And why don't we go ahead and create a new category. New category. We'll just call it a Wayfinder, keep things organized. And so I'll go to New Chunk, and we'll go ahead and create that. And we're going to call this one Outer TPL. And again, you can name it whatever you want, but just to make it easier, I'll just call it Outer TPL, just to keep things organized. Okay, now where is the code for Outer TPL? Uh, again, if you come to their documentation and you look, by default, the if you look here, it shows you the default chunks, uh, or rather the default code if you don't specify it has this format right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. And let's come over here. Oops, right here. And I'm going to take that ID out right there. They were just using an example with that. Okay, what we've just done is defined an outer TPL. And this code right here, this WF wrapper, is going to be populated with what you're seeing here. So unless you want to even configure that more, which you don't have to, we'll just let the system handle that itself. We'll have it set the default. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go ahead and say, okay, um, I want to give it its own class, and let's come over here. I want to give it the class of top nav. Class of top nav. Okay. We'll save that. Now, and by the way, I need to assign that to a category. I'll just assign that to Wayfinder. Okay, now let's create a, the inner TPL. The inner TPL is the UL uh, navigation that's going to show up in the drop down. So I'll go to create new chunk here. Again, you don't have to name this inner TPL, I'm just doing this to make it a little easier to keep things organized. And if we come over here and look, um, I believe we should see, well, actually what we'll do is, we'll, I remember now, we'll just copy the exact code. And in this case, we named it uh, dropdown. So what this is going to do is going to be the code that will show up on the dropdown. So we'll go ahead and save that. Okay. And let's come over here. I'm going to delete this code out that I just wrote a minute ago. And I'm going to say, okay, uh, I'll say and outer TPL equals, and we named it outer TPL just to make it easy. You can again name it whatever you want. And we'll call it inner T. 
TPL. And it's going to refer to those chunks we just created, outer and inner. And it's going to um, populate, populate them using that format that we use in those chunks. Now, now I'm going to set the level, level to 2. Okay, okay. And I'm going to, and I'm going to come back over here and clear the cache. Clear the cache. Now, when we, now refresh, when we refresh, it will it will be broken. I guess I have not done the HTML and set up the drop down drop down navigation. I apologize for that. For that. But I just want to I just want to say we want to source the source code with you here. If we open this up, up, and this is using the so so sorry about this. Uh, but uh, if you uh, look at the structure, structure um, I believe uh, which page was it that the robotics resource had children solutions? Okay. Okay. So, again, because it's broken, we can't really see you much. I'm sorry about that. But what we'll do is we'll come down to Solutions. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now, just like the format should be, uh, because it's going to be a drop-down, you'll have uh, right there just how we define that uh, inner chunk to be and the, um, the inner TPL. And as you can see, the outer TPL was exactly how we wanted it. So hopefully this makes sense. When you look at the structure, you're seeing outer TPL and inner TPL. And I use this all the time when clients need me to create drop-down menus. Um, I just use this structure here. Now there's one other thing I use on, uh, on occasion that comes in handy. When I want to be able to specify a row prefix, and let me show you what I mean. Let me just tag this on here. And I'm just going to bump that back to 1 so it doesn't look all messed up. Uh, what if I want to say, okay, each um, each resource in Mod X in the list navigation will have its own unique ID. Um, you could just you know name a prefix, whatever you want it to be. So in this case, I'm going to just call it example. Uh, obviously, use whatever works for you in your case. Let's come back over here and let's uh, refresh, or rather clear the cache to reimport that template that we just saved on the server there. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh this real quick. Okay, now let's see what happens in the navigation. You'll now see that each one of these list-based navigations, or rather the list items in the navigation, now has a prefix of example that we just added. You could, you know, name it whatever you want. This comes in handy sometimes in the drop-down navigations where, you know, I don't want children to show up in the navigation. So I'll just say, okay, all children of this, you know, list item display none. You know, and you can uh, specify it by the ID. So this comes in real handy to give you really another level of control of the navigation, just to really do whatever you want. And again, I know this is extremely tip of the iceberg. If you go into Wayfinder and look at the documentation, you're going to see a lot of powerful stuff that you can do. But what I just showed you probably accounts for 95% of the time that I build navigations in Mod X. Uh, what I just showed you pretty much works for what I need. So anyway, I hope that helps you.